our form object offers us a few properties we can access in order to track the validity of a form. So the first one we have to look at is pristine. With dollar pristine, we'll have a Boolean value set to true whenever the form or any of these inputs have not been touched. So whenever the page loads and the user didn't input anything inside the, the form fields, our dollar pristine will be true. Dirty is the reverse of pristine, so whenever the user touches any of the fields, the word form will be having the dirty value set to true. And the same will happen to each field that the user has touched. The dollar valid boolean will be set to true when all the form fields are valid as well. So if we added uh, any validation to our form, like a required field or minimum length and max length or specific patterns that need to be evaluated, well, the valid uh, will tell us if all of the fields have been successfully validated. And in the same way, we have an invalid property, which is the opposite of what I've just said. If any of the fields is not valid, if any of the controls is not valid, the word form will be invalid and the invalid dollar property will be set to true. Submit is something that is specifically for the form itself and not also for the fields. And this, whenever the user clicks on submit, this value will be set to true. And the last two are touched and untouched. Touched will be true when the user has interacted with a specific form control. So let's say that the user clicks into the username field and starts typing. Touch will be false unless the user moves the focus on another field. So if the user clicks, for example, on last name, the touched field for that specific uh, input for false name will be now true. Every other field will stay untouched, so the property untouched for each one of them will be set to false as long as the user doesn't interact with those. Let's have a look in our application just to recap what we just saw in the slides. To do so, I'll use another nice plugin, which is the AngularJS Batarang. I'll select my scope which we can see also in ng inspector and I'll select my form object. So we'll see, as you can see, the form itself has a dollar dirty set to false, dollar pristine set to true because we didn't touch it, dollar valid set to false and add invalid set to true. Invalid is already set to true due to required fields in our form. The last thing we notice is that there is a sub object for each one of our form fields. Let's look at even name. As you can see, we have again untouched set to true, as I said, because we didn't interact with that. We have touched set to false, pristine set to true, dirty and valid set to false, invalid set to true. Let's try to, for example, type something inside the name field. I'll type my name. And let's look again at what happens here. Untouched is still set to true because I didn't move the focus, but dirty is set to true now because I have interacted with the form. Valid is set to true because this field was required and the invalid is set to false now. So if I click on the description field, also untouched will be set to false and touched to true. Let's fill in the remaining list of fields so we'll be able to verify what's the status of our properties in the main form object. So I'll type the description, I'll select a date, my location, I'll click on a category and I'll type an email, alex at dummy.com. Is a special email? No. So as we can see now, the valid property has been set to true, the invalid property is now false, and it means that all our validations have been applied. Well, we didn't apply the many validations, so the required one is the only one that is working right now, but in the next lesson, we'll see how to deal with those. So now our form is valid because all the required fields have been added. Let's look at the HTML itself for a second. If we look at the form element, specifically at the class attribute, you'll see that there are a few classes being applied automatically by Angular, and those are ngValidMean, ngDirty, ngValidParse, and so on. Yeah, basically for each property that I showed you, you have a corresponding CSS class that you can use. 
and it's dynamically applied based on the status of our input fields and the form itself. So if we remove any of these inputs, like the name, as you can see, the form will be automatically have an ng invalid property assigned to those. So if you need to deal with CSS based on validation, that's the way you do it. And we're going to do that actually. In the same way, our uh, input uh, name field has now an ng invalid required class applied as well as ng invalid. If everything I showed you so far is clear, we can now talk about the different validations we can apply to our form controls and how we can prevent the form from being submitted if it's invalid.